Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to program an SEL421 relay to implement a distance protection scheme for a transmission line. So distance protection is probably the most widely used form of protection for transmission lines, and in this video we're going to be showing you how to calculate settings for a MO element, which is a distance protection element that has a circular characteristic, and we're going to see how we can program that into an SEL421 relay. Alright, so first let's talk about what the MO element is, and how we can use it to protect a transmission line. So to make it easier to picture, I've developed this spreadsheet in which we can plot the transmission line and the distance protection elements in an impedance plot, which is what I have over here on the screen. Now this is sometimes called an RX plot, since we have a plot of resistance here on the x-axis versus reactance here on the y-axis. So what we can do here is plot the transmission line's impedance and the MO elements characteristic and this is how we can visually see our settings and how they protect the transmission line. So here, for example, we can see that we have a transmission line and let me actually zoom in a little bit over here. So we have in this example, a transmission line that has a length of 10 ohms at an angle of 80 degrees. So the impedance of the transmission line that we're trying to protect is 10 ohms at 80 degrees. And we can also see how our MO elements, in this case we have two zones, zone one and zone two, which we're gonna talk about in more detail here in a second, but we have two protection elements that are protecting that transmission line. Now here, when there is a fault in the transmission line, the impedance that a relay will see will be a point on this transmission line. That is, of course, if there's no fault impedance. So what our MO element does is if it detects that the impedance that the relay sees is inside its circle, one of these two circles, so this one and this one over here, it will declare a trip. And if it's outside of those circles, it will not trip. So here again, we have what we call two zones, which we'll discuss here in a second. Now, normally there is load current that flows through the transmission line. And typically the impedance that they really will see for a load condition will be some point further out on the plot. In other words, it will be some high impedance, high magnitude impedance at a very low angle, usually around 30 degrees. Now, these two zones are used to provide protection for the entire length of the transmission line. So we're going to be using two zones, zone one and zone two, and each one of them protects a portion of the transmission line. And typically in industry, the zone one has an instantaneous trip and characteristic, meaning that it has no intentional delay. And we set it short of the remote bus for that transmission line. So in other words, if we have a transmission line that has an impedance of 10 ohms, let's say, we might set our zone one protection to be just a slightly shorter from that. So for example, 80% of that transmission line. So if we have a 10 ohms transmission line, then we will set that at eight ohms so that we underreach the remote bus by some slight margin. Now, the reason why we do this is because there's always going to be errors in measurement of the impedance and current and voltage in general. So we always want to have some margin. And since this element has an instantaneous tripping characteristic, we don't want it to reach all the way to the remote bus. So we apply some margin, usually 10 to 20%. So your setting might be something like 70 to 90% of the transmission line impedance for this zone one protection, since it has an instantaneous tripping characteristic. Because if we didn't implement this margin, and then for some reason we set this to 100%, and there's a fault at the remote bus and there's some errors, they really might think that the fault is inside the transmission line when in reality it is at the remote bus. So we wanna leave some margin so that we underreach the transmission line, but just some slight margin. Again, this is because this has an instantaneous tripping characteristic. So typically a setting of 70 to 90% would work just fine. For this example, we're gonna use 80%. Now this of course leaves the remaining 10 or 20% of the transmission line unprotected. So for this, we implement what we call a zone two, which has a slight time delay, typically around 30 cycles or half a second. And this will cover the entire transmission line with some margin again. So in this case, we wanna make sure that our zone two protects the entire transmission line. So we might set it to something like 115 to 130%, somewhere around there, so that we always cover the entire transmission line Again, with some margin because we want to account for errors in the impedance measurement. Now, a typical setting for this is something around 120%, which is what we're going to be using in this example. So we're going to have a zone one that has an instantaneous trip at 80%, and then we're going to do a zone two that has a time delayed trip and at around 30 cycles or half a second, 
that has a reach of 120% of the transmission line. All right, so the spreadsheet that I just showed you will be available for download. Check out the link in the description below if you wanna use it. You can use it to plot your transmission line as well as your zone one and zone two elements and see how you can protect a transmission line. Now for this video, what I wanna do is go over an example on how we can actually calculate the settings for an actual transmission line. And we're gonna see an ETAP model of our transmission line here in a second. And we're gonna develop the settings for that transmission line. And then we're gonna program that into an SEL 421 relay. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. All right, so again, this spreadsheet is gonna be available for download. Check out the link in the description below if you wanna download this spreadsheet for your own use. But what I wanna show you here is a practical example on how we can develop settings for an SEL 421 relay. All right, so here I have an example of two transmission lines going from one substation on the left to another substation here on the right, which I've just called T sub one and T sub two for transmission substation one and two. But basically what we wanna do here is we want to implement a distance protection scheme for this transmission line on the top. So now, as you can see, we have our SEL 421 relay over here, which is getting current measurements from this current transformer, which has a ratio of 2000 to five, so 400 to one. And then it's getting voltage measurement from this potential transformer over here, which has a ratio of 230 kV to 115 volts secondary. So 230,000 to 115, which is effectively a ratio of 2000 to one. Now, in order to develop the settings for this transmission line, and let me actually make this a little bit smaller so we can fit it on the screen over here. So in order to develop the settings for this transmission line, we first need to know the impedance of the transmission line. In this case, Again, it's this one over here. And here in ETAP, we can see the impedance of the transmission line over here. We see that it has a resistance of 0.698 ohms and a reactance of 4.21 ohms. So this gives us an important piece of information because now we know what the entire length of the transmission line in impedance is. So what we need to do is we need to convert this to polar form, and then we're gonna set our protection element to protect for this transmission line. We're gonna set our zone one to 80% like we discussed and our zone two to 120%. That way we have both an underreaching element that trips instantaneous and an overreaching element that covers the entire transmission line, but has a small delay. In this case, we're gonna use 30 cycles or half a second. All right, so let's see how we can calculate that. First, again, we need to convert this, which is in rectangular form, this impedance over here, the positive sequence impedance, from rectangular form to polar form. So let's write down these numbers, so 0.698. So here I'm gonna say that our transmission line impedance, which I'm gonna call Z line, is 0 0.698 plus J times the reactance, which is 4.213, as we can see over here. So 4.213. So here plus J, 4.213. So now if we convert this to polar form, this gives us 4.27 at an angle, and here I'm rounding to two decimal places, so at an angle of 80.59 degrees. And this, again, is in ohms. Now this over here is ohms primary, meaning the actual physical quantity for that transmission line. So 4.27, 80.59. Now, we do know that we have a CT ratio of 2,000 to 5, which is 400 to 1, and a PT ratio of 230,000 divided by 115, which again gives us 2,000 to 1. So this impedance over here, again, is in primary ohms. So we need to convert that to secondary ohms because that's what the relay is going to see. Remember that the relay is reading from the current transformer and the voltage transformer, or sometimes called a potential transformer, but the current and the voltage that it reads is gonna be a scaled down version of the actual quantities. And this 4.27 ohms is the actual primary quantities. So in this case, we can convert from primary, and we just need to do that for the magnitude, to secondary by multiplying times the CT ratio and dividing by the PT ratio. So this gives us 4.27 times 400 divided by 2000 is 0 0.854. And of course the angle is not going to change. So 80.59 degrees. And now this is ohms secondary. So now we can plug that into our calculator. So we can say then over here, and let me actually just 
zoom all the way back over here and let's just make this a little bit smaller. All right, so in our calculator then, we know that the magnitude of the transmission line is 0 0.854. And it has an angle of this one over here, 80.59 degrees. So 80.59 degrees. Now notice over here how much that decreased. Of course, again, we had an example of a 10 ohm transmission line before. And so of course, now we need to change these numbers. Our zone one distance is going to be 80% of this number. Now, of course, this is a spreadsheet, so I can just do equals 0 0.8 times my transmission line length, this number. And so, of course, our zone one over here decreased and our zone two reach is going to be 120%. So 1.2 times this number and 1.2 times this is this number, 1.02 ohms. So basically, again, let's go over this one more time. What we're saying here is that this right here is the transmission line, so T line. That's the length of the transmission line, meaning that at this point over here on an impedance plot, that's going to be the remote bus. So let me actually get rid of this. This point over here is going to be the remote bus. Our zone one will reach up to this point on the transmission line, which we've set to 80%. So anytime that the relay is reading an impedance somewhere here, somewhere inside this circle, it is going to declare a trip instantaneously since we don't have a delay for our zone one element, which I have over here. Now, this point over here, again, is the remote bus. So you can see that that's well within our zone two element, which again means that anytime the relay is reading an impedance anywhere on these points, it will trip after 30 cycles. So if it reads an impedance that falls within that circle, it's going to wait 30 cycles, so half a second, and then it is going to trip. So that way we can protect the entire transmission line. All right, so that's how you can calculate the settings for the transmission line based on this example transmission line between two substations. Now let's see how we can program that into the SEL421 relay. All right, so we have our settings over here. And now let's see how we can program that into the SEL421 relay. So let's go ahead and go to QuickSet, which is the software that we can use to program the SEL421 relay. And in here, what I've done is basically just created an example settings file for a 421 relay using just default settings. So I'm gonna go over just a few settings that we need to program into this relay to be able to implement our distance protection scheme. So there's a couple of things that we need to define First, we need to define the CT ratio and the PT ratio, because again, they really needs to know what those numbers are. So you can see how you can scale the current reading and the voltage reading. So that is going to be here under group one, set one, line configuration. And for this example, we're gonna assume that we're using the W input on the relay. Again, our CT ratio was 2000 to five, so 400 to one. Our PT ratio was 2001, so actually the default setting in this case works just fine. We're gonna assume that we're using the Y winding or the Y input for the voltage inputs on the 421 relay. And then the nominal voltage line to line, and this is secondary voltage, would then be 230 kV divided by our PT ratio, which in this case is 2000. So that gives us a nominal secondary voltage of 115. So that defines the current transformer and the voltage transformer. Now we need to tell the relay what's the impedance of the transmission line. So that's defined with these two settings over here. And here we're gonna focus on the positive sequence only since we're programming a phase distance protection scheme. So Z1 mag is the magnitude of the impedance, which again, we determined that before, that was this number over here, 0.854, and that's in secondary ohms, which is the way that the relay takes it as well. So 0.854 at 80.59 degrees. So here we can say 0 0.85. Here you have to round to two decimal places. So 80.59 degrees. And again, that's the positive sequence. We're gonna ignore the zero sequence for now since we're focusing on a phase distance protection scheme. So that tells the relay what's the impedance of the transmission line. Now, of course, we need to program the 
distance elements, in this case, Mo distance elements. And we're going to be implementing two zones. In our zone one, we calculated that that was 80% of the transmission line length, which we calculated over here. So our zone one is going to be 0.68. Our zone two is going to be 1.02. So 0 0.68 and then 1.02 for our zone two. Now the delays, we want our zone one to have an instantaneous trip, so we can leave that at zero. And we want our zone two to have a 30 cycle delay, so half a second delay. So we can program that to 30 cycles. So now we've programmed both our zones and the transmission line length. And let me actually show you this real quick as well. This is a graphical editor that you can find in the SEL421 relay. And let me actually just go back and disable this load encroachment element. And so here you can see that this is basically the same plot that we had on the spreadsheet, which is this one over here. So basically we're plotting the transmission line, which is this line over here. We're plotting our zone one and we're plotting our zone two. So again, you can see that that matches what the relay seen over here because we've entered all the settings same as we calculated them in the spreadsheet. So of course, this plot is now going to match the spreadsheet. So that's a nice way that you can kind of confirm your settings within the SEL421 settings file. Now that of course programs our Mo elements, but we need to include them in a trip equation so that we can use it in a trip and output. So here I'm going to use M1P and M2PT. So these two relay orbits. And if you don't know what relay orbits, we covered that in our power system protection courses. But basically they are logical tags that tell the relay when a protection element has declared a trip. Now in this case, again, we have M1P and M2PT. What that means is zone one trip without a time delay and zone two trip with the time delay. Now in this case, technically we could say here M1PT, which would include the time delay of the zone one element, but we've programmed that to be zero cycles. So it doesn't really matter whether we use M1P or M1PT, they're effectively going to be the same thing. So we can just leave that at M1P and then or M2PT again. They are the logical tags that the relay uses for each protection element. In this case, M1P is the tag for zone one and M2P is the tag for zone two. So now we program our trip logic and now we can go to our outputs. Let's say that we were using, for example, output 101 and we can just program this to 3PT not TR, 3PT, which is a three pole trip based on the trip logic or trip equation as we have it over here. So here what we've done is we've programmed our phase distance elements with our settings over here. Then we routed that to a trip logic over here. And then we routed that trip logic to an output over here, which is eventually going to go in this example at least to a trip coil in the breaker and physically trip the breaker. All right, so that's how you program an SEL421 relay to implement a distance protection scheme. Now, if you wanna learn more about power system protection and power engineering, check out our online courses, link in the description below, where we cover this topic and many other topics in power system protection in much more detail. And just a couple more things before you go. Again, if you wanna download the spreadsheet that we used in this video, check out the link in the description below where you can download the spreadsheet and you can use that for your own settings. And of course, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power system protection and power engineering. And we'll see you in the next one.